G'day there, Ray Corcoran here. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about should you do uh, your dream job or should you do a job that you may not like that much but does pay uh, really, really well. So in terms of my story, if you wanna learn about that, just go to the first video that I posted uh, on this channel a few months ago. But basically, long story short was early on, I kind of realized or I noticed that everything needed money. You know, the holidays that you go on, the cars that you drive, the house that you live in, the education that you can get, you know, the recreational things you can do the medical care that you can get. So I, I kind of just noticed, uh, you know, I was looking at everything from the lens of everything needs money and you need money to bankroll your lifestyle. And the more money that you have, the better lifestyle and, and, and more comfortable that you can be. So early on, it was a big priority for me. When I was about in year eight or nine in high school, they have a careers advisor. And around that point, they force everybody to have at least one meeting with the careers advisor to talk about what you're gonna do long-term, what are you thinking about after school and that sort of stuff. And at school, my favorite topics were, or subjects were um, art, history, and uh, English and maths. So they were kind of the things I was good at. I was pretty rubbish at everything else. I kind of came to them and said that I wanted to do mainly, most likely architecture. Um, you know, I, I was really, really into it at that time and I was something that I could feel I could see myself doing um, or something like graphic design and I just generally like design and, and doing creative things. Now the careers advisor shot that down pretty fast and said that people don't make a lot of money in architecture and they definitely don't make money in graphic design. So me being someone that's you know young and impressionable and uh, wanted to make a lot of money, I, I, you know that was a, a red flag for me and non, it was a non-negotiable for me. So no matter how much I wanted to do that, I was like, if that doesn't pay, I can't, I'm not gonna do it. Scrap that idea. And I think all these careers advisors don't actually realize how much of an impact they have on people's careers uh, by saying these flippant comments. But anyways, I spoke to this guy, he said not to do it. I said, all right, well, I need to think about, go back to the drawing board, think about another career I could do. I ended up looking at marketing because I was kind of a good balance of uh, creative stuff and numbers and analytics, which I like. And around that time, I'd also read in um, read in some books that you know, I, if you want to make a lot of money, you need to get close to the money. That basically means that you know, if you can be someone that is good at bringing in revenue um, or br attracting customers for a business, then you're going to be very, very valuable to them, and you're going to be you know, you're going to have a direct impact on how much money they make. And as a result, you can get paid very well. For me, that started off my interest in marketing, and it looked like something that if I got good at it. I could get paid really, really well. And while it didn't make a lot of money at the start, it did end up making uh, a lot of money down the track. Uh, fast forward today, I've had uh, my own marketing agency um, for a number of years, and it's been very, very profitable uh, once I got good at it, and then I was started charging based on value. Basically, the short version is it all worked out great. Now, for someone that's currently, probably, you know, if you're looking to decide right now, um, there's a number of things that I would personally consider before deciding um, which route to go and hopefully get to a point where you can have both. But I'm just gonna talk about some of the things that I think about when approaching this. So the first one might piss some people off, but doing what you uh, love or your passion, um, I think is a privilege. And if I think about, you know, uh, my parents and, and, and maybe your parents or grandparents, um, I feel like it's a very millennial thing to follow your passion and uh, it's very, very cheesy. And it sounds nice in theory, but the reality is, especially as you have uh, kids and, and maybe more serious uh, needs in life in terms of financial needs, if you don't have a lot of money coming in, you know, you doing your passion, I almost, it almost feels, uh, for me, it felt kind of selfish for me to be doing some little passion project or some low paying passion role when maybe my family needs a certain amount of money coming in the door. So that was something that was always playing on my mind um, to make sure that I made sure that I handled my business and brought in the money that I need to bring in so that everything else can keep rolling along. So I think for a lot of people like, you know, feeling maybe uh, entitled to doing something that they love, like, you know, generations before us didn't have that option. When my parents came in, my, like my dad came here, he literally rocked up on um, like a Friday and had to get a job by Monday or something ridiculous like that. There was no consideration for what's your passion and what do you love to do? You know, it was like, I need to get here. I need to start making some money ASAP and then I'll turn that into something later. And for me, I kind of feel the same. Um, I've always, uh, my, even my mum was always very much like having a job is a privilege, let alone doing your passion. Um, just having work is something to be appreciated and you should respect the fact that you've even got work. If you're coming from places where, you know, there's been uh, periods of unemployment, you know, say like in, uh, my mum's from Ireland, Ireland's had you know, numerous phases of uh, high unemployment uh, over the years, stuff like that, you know, you become very appreciative for, for work, let alone work that you love. So. I think it's a little bit overrated for me uh, personally. I would clean toilets if you paid me high enough. I want a lot of money, but I, I would do that for any amount of money, you know, for, for the right amount of money. The second thing to understand is that 
Industries that get paid a lot or get paid a little, it's a little bit uh, misleading. Some industries don't get paid a lot on average, but the key here is on average. If you're someone that wants to do a particular passion or you've got like a particular industry that you really want to get into, I would look at just get really, really good at it. You know, being the top 5% of the industry, work towards that because the top, top you know, 5%, top 1% in any industry usually get paid extremely well. So for you, you need to look at, are there any examples of people getting paid extremely well in this industry? So it might be a low paying industry overall, but if you notice that there are people that do get paid really, really well, and you're like a very driven person, then you could make a lot of money there. And these days with modern business, you know, you can create a business around something that you love a lot easier than you used to be able to. We've got cheap labor from overseas and the Philippines and stuff where you can get basically staff for your business for way less than ever before. You've got stuff like technology. A lot of the software that we use today that we might pay $99 a month for, that used to be thousands of dollars and only accessible to really big businesses that could afford it. So that's even easier. Internet connectivity is better than ever. Most people have a fast internet connection, even in um, uh, poorer communities. It's like it, the fast internet's almost becoming ubiquitous. And generally things like social media are reaching uh, potential customers and that sort of stuff uh, is in building an audience is uh, easier than ever before. So there's a lot of things on your side in terms of building a business around something that you love. And for a lot of people, if you're in a lower paying industry, uh, business ownership can be a really good way to do it. So um, say if you're in like healthcare, you might find that being a physiotherapist, you might get paid 80K or whatever it is. Um, and you might not be able to get crazy amounts of money coming in, but if you considered business ownership, you could stay in that industry, keep helping people, if you because if that's the thing that you love doing. Um, but if you owned two clinics, three clinics, you know, and that might take time to build up to, but if you had a handful of clinics, you could make um, quite a nice amount of money every single year, and you're helping people, and you're staying in the industry. So that's something to keep in mind. The next thing to look at is, uh, you know, how high paying is the job that, you know, if you're in a situation where you're looking at a passion thing or a high paying job, if the high paying job pays, you know, 100K or 120K and the other job pays a third of that, for every year in the job that you don't like, you're buying three years in that other job potentially. So that's one way I think about it. If the price, if the uh, salary difference or the money you can make is only very small, probably makes sense to go with the thing that you like doing. However, if there's a significant difference in, in the amount that you can get paid, you know, even if it's a job that you hate, if I was early in my career and I could get paid a lot, I would do almost any job if I could get paid a lot because I know that's buying me multiple years in my passion job. And it means that when I retire it comes up much earlier and I end up shrinking the timeline. So for me, I would rather put in a few years, even if it's a, a, in something I may not love, as a means to an end. So it doesn't need to be permanent as well. Some people think you have to be married to an industry forever. It can be a means to an end, where if you can get paid well for a few years, take that money, invest it, start to build your wealth, then you can move into something lower paying and it doesn't really matter that much because you've got other assets outside of it and other savings outside of it too. Number four is, um, along the lines of getting good at it, is the confidence, competence loop. So generally whatever role that you're in, try and get really, really good at it because the more that you, uh, the better you are at something, the more that you tend, uh, tend to enjoy it. If you're in a job that you don't like, or maybe there's a high paying job that you're looking at that doesn't get you excited, try and become the best in the company or try and become the best in the department or the best in the state. Generally, I find most jobs are more enjoyable when you're trying to be number one or you're trying to be the best in the industry or one of the best. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of just go to work and do the minimum required. And that's actually, I find that actually was more boring and uh, maybe less happy than trying to be the best of the best of the best because I had something to work on. So, you know, for you, if you're in an industry, uh, have a job opportunity where you can get paid more and it's boring, think about, well, make it more enjoyable by trying to be the best. It'll make it a bit more exciting and a bit more interesting. The next thing is you gotta do what's right for your family or future family. So for a lot of people, you know, if I think, you know, you could, Push the hobby to the weekend if you need to. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I need to be happy and it's not all about money. Um, and I don't know, when I hear that, I kind of uh, laugh a bit because it's not all about money, but it's an extremely important part of things. If you have something where you can make only a small amount of money and do something you love, I think you're gonna have more stress and it's not gonna be as good as you may think um, having those financial stresses while you're doing your passion. You know, Save it for the weekend if you need to, and then use the high paying job to bring in the cash and then from there, that can buy back some of your time, and then you can start doing more and more of the thing that you love. But you know, you gotta think about, for most people when they have a family, they're gonna have other people depending on them, and you're gonna have multiple mouths to feed rather than just your own. 
So if you think a bit ahead, um, it probably makes a bit more sense to take whatever, like the best money that you can get um, rather than doing some sort of you know passion thing that may not pay uh, either ever or it might not pay for a long time. And in terms of doing both, I think you know ultimately it comes down to uh, you can do both. When I started in the marketing industry, uh, I made a list of 10 people who I thought in Australia were very prominent in the industry. And I actually reached out to all 10 of them um, and I expected one or two replies, to be honest. I actually ended up getting nine people replying. Uh, one said no, um, one didn't reply, and eight of them said yes to either catching up in person for a coffee or B, uh, jumping on the phone with me. And many of these people I still know today, and uh, it was one of the best things I ever did, and I'd highly recommend you doing it because you wanna find people that are further down the path, you know? Find people that are making money in the industry that you wanna make, and you'll be surprised that these people are more than willing to give you help. I have people that reach out to me that are just starting the marketing industry that I help out all the time, um, you know, just in between work and stuff. And like, because that was me only a few years ago as well. And I've got a lot more to go. There's a heaps of people that are more than happy to help you, uh, help you out because that was them, you know, years ago. So I hope you liked the video. Um, I'd love to hear from you. You know, have you ever had to choose between uh, being paid well versus doing something that you love? Have you been able to achieve both if you're lucky enough? And do you have any regrets about going one path or the other? Uh, let me know in the comments. I always love to hear about that. And uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video.